In order to demonstrate working with link and XML, we'll need some data. And to keep it simple, I've generated the data here in a simple procedure called Create Course List. It returns an array of course objects, and we can see the course objects here. And course does nothing more than get and set the values of three fields and provides a constructor for a title, a year, and an author associated with the course. Back in our code, Create Course List just generates an array of three of those courses. Okay, well, let's start by looking at how you might generate some XML. Well, what XML do we want? The XML I want looks like this. I have a sample.xml file here, which demonstrates what I want the output to look like. I would like a courses element within there, an element for each course that meets the criteria that Robert Greene is an author of the course. So although we generate three courses in the code, there are only two courses in this output. Well, how do we make this happen? Well, let's run this procedure demo with no linked XML and try this first. Demo no link to XML is O. Here we are. Let's go full screen. And now we're going to do this the old way. First, we'll create the course list. So we have an array of courses, and there they are. There's the first one, and so on. We'll create a new XML document. This is all using techniques from before link. And you'll see it requires a lot of code. We first create the courses element and call it root. And then for each course named item in our collection of courses, if the item.author.contains, well, there's author. It does contain Robert Greene. If it does, then we'll create a new element named course by calling the documents create element method. We'll set an attribute on that element of year to be the year the course was written. And then we'll append this as a child of the courses element. Now we'll create the children of this new course element. We'll create an element named title, set its text, and append it as a child of the course element. Do the same for author, append it as a child of the course element, and repeat that for each course in the collection of courses. When we're done, we'll append, oh, we're not quite done yet. There we are doing the last one. When we're done, we'll append root as a child of the document, so it's now connected with the XML document, and we can display the results, and you'll see that we did generate that same XML. It's not formatted correctly, but it is well-formed XML. You can see the courses element within their course element. Within the course element, we have an attribute for the year and an author and title element, then a second course element, and within it, a title and author element. So it is exactly the XML we wanted. It was just difficult to generate. Well, let's do the same thing. Well, let's look at the new way of generating XML content. This is option P here. And we won't use link to XML here. Instead, we're just going to show off the new classes that are provided to make link to XML possible. There's the X element class and X attribute. There are lots of other X classes, X comment and so on. But all I need is x element and x attribute here. So we start by creating a new x element object named XML. And in the constructor to that class, we pass in the name of the element, courses, and the content of the element, which is this stuff. Well, the content is a new x element named course and its content. Well, it's got an attribute named year, the value of 2005 an X element named title with the title of the course, and an X element named author with the author of the course. If we run that, you'll see without really writing much code at all, we've generated this very simple XML. Didn't require creating nodes and appending them as a child and setting properties. We did it all declaratively right in the code here. Not only is this easier, it's easier to read. You can see this code and understand what it's going to look like once it becomes XML. It's a great new feature in Visual Studio 2008. But let's use link and XML together now to generate all of the content. I'll press Option Q. 
And here we are. And in this case, we'll do the same sort of thing, except we'll do it for all the courses. So we generate our course list. And now we're going to generate the outer courses element by creating a new X element named courses. And this then supplies the content of that courses element. Okay, well, what is the content? From course in courses, here's our courses variable. So for each course in that collection, where course.author.contains Robert Green, so we're using a where clause, then we have a select clause, a link select clause. The select clause allows us to project the output in any format we want, so we can project out a new X element named course for each course, which contains within it this content. And the content is a new attribute named year with the year in it, a new element named title with the title in it, and a new element named author with the author in it. And we repeat that for each course in the full list of courses because that's what the from clause says to do. So the from clause indicates where to get the data, the where clause indicates how to filter it, and the select clause indicates how to project the data into the resulting X element object. If we run at full speed, we get the exact XML output we wanted. That is, a course's outer element, two course inner elements, in both cases, Robert Greene is an author. We get the year attribute and title and author child elements in each case. So here, we've used link to XML to generate the contents of this courses element. We haven't done any querying yet. We've just generated new XML content using link to XML. But you can certainly see how this is an important and useful feature for creating XML content.